Good morning. Welcome to BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. We're here today to, to rock your world. We're going to talk a little bit about safety, and we're going to do it, Drive Safe Dave, I think, better than we've ever done it before. Is this the day? It's the only day. It's the one-way <laughs> day, and it's we're going to take it's that next one day. <laughs> Yesterday was one way, so today's a different. But it starts right here, and guess what? You get off at this exit right here at Airport Drive, and this is where it all starts right here. And that's where you are. And we're going to do it right here. At, 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 at say it, baby. Just say it. <laughs> hey, listen, we are at 94 days of, of accident-free driving. And those days include everyone paying attention, everyone watching this BCB live show. It's phenomenal the streaks we're running right now. 94 days. We're six days away from the big old century mark. I cannot wait for that 100 day. You know what? We are crashing through in a good way. Whoa! In a good way. Whoa! We're crashing through Dude, the barriers. Knock on wood. <laughs> knock through on barriers wood. And making, setting new groundwork, going through the 100 deadliest days with great success. Hey, listen, we can't get to that 100th day unless you make today that safest day, the day that you, you really watch out for everything. Do it better than you did yesterday. Focus on today. It's all you can do. Drive safe, Dave. Listen. Toys R Us, big fan of Toys R Us. And, and let me tell you something, like you know, you know like who's toys. giddy right now? The producer, our 14-year-old our <laughs> sitting behind the camera right now. Hey, producer, check it out. Toys R Us opening up in over 400 Macy stores. I can't imagine a better way to start the rest of the year right now. It's almost <laughs> Christmas time, and I'm already having a great time. I'll tell you what, I was, I was, uh, I went through a, a pretty depressive episode whenever I found out that Toys R Us was closing. Well, but now that they're coming back, what do I have to be worried about? Now, now I know what I can spend my money I love on. Love toys. I, <laughs> everyone know, loves toys. Easy there, dude. We're talking about Toys R Us, all right? <laughs> the child's tour area. And listen, hey, what is up real quick? Hey, before you get too excited, it doesn't open up until next year, 2022, but it's a great way to start 2022. What is up with the backwards R? Anybody you know? know? I, I, I think it's just probably just a marketing thing because they also have like babies R Us and all well, of that. I'm well, sure it was just like a with the logo. Toys, it, it just carried on. I get that part. So I took the time and looked it up myself. Okay, let's hear it. Any idea? I, I know what it means in Russian, but I have no idea. Oh, backwards R. Well, listen, it, it could be a thing. Actually, the, the, the guy that started Toys R Us is a World War II veteran. Didn't know if you knew that or not. But the R, and you look it up in a couple different ways, it says it was to resemble that a kid wrote it. That was one oh, theory. Okay. When you Google it, check this out. When you Google it, it comes back with an answer. And, and you know what? I feel like just saying, like, no S after this. But here we go. Google. The backwards R stands for R. A-R-E. Seriously? I'm pretty sure we all knew that. <laughs> you know, that, that's what Google comes back with. It stands for R. I, oh, really? I know it's really in Cyrillic. I know it means I. So All right, I so know. you know what? It, I don't know where Music Man Mike is, but we have his sidekick here as well that that doubles up as a music guy. Hey, what about corn? What's it stand for in corn? Um, I guess. Does it have a meaning? Corn? In corn? In corn? Corn? The the no, band? Like the band. band? What does yes. it mean? What does the R mean in it's corn? It's backward when the, in the music band corn. It's also no spelled I have no idea. with the backward. Well, then R. I guess it's co R in. So they so whoever co is is also in, right? Is that, is that is that is that? I don't. That, uh, do you know what it means? You know what? So I looked that up as well. Okay. Just the curious guy I am, and it says that they borrowed it from Toys R Us. <laughs> of course because, they did. Because listen to this. Because most of them, m many of the band worked at Toys R Us before they started the band. Oh, nice. So over in the, and they're playing with the toy guitars and the toy drums. I don't know about that part. I'm just. Maybe. It could be. I don't know. But anyway, just some random facts for you, Toys R Us, for you corn fans, the music band corn. Good stuff to know. A-R-E. Drive... <laughs> That's what you came up with. I'm just, yeah, A-R-E. That's what Google says. Hey, listen, you know what, Drive Safe? Also, we've got some uh, some COVID things going on as well. If you're, if you're looking on eBay right now, before we talk <laughs> yeah. too serious about yeah. COVID, and we know it's serious, let me tell you something. Just because you buy your, your, your vaccination card on eBay, it doesn't make you vaccinated, no. right? No. In fact, I, I think, and if I'm not mistaken, because that's a government document, it is somewhat a form of treason, right? I mean, if you want to get technical, 
you want to get down to it, it, it I mean, it carries a pretty heavy sentence, right? If you All right, so I'll tell you, so, so there's a gentleman here that, that got busted selling them on eBay. So he's got it, 12 counts, sold 125, and each count has a maximum prison sentence of 10 years. A maximum. I mean, seriously. <laughs> on it, on their own, right? Not <laughs> yeah, yeah, so think about it. I mean, here you go, Drive Safe Dave. You're sitting in prison. I know you spent many a day in prison, <laughs> but here you are now, and you're in the prison yard, and, and the guy's walking up. Hey, and, I didn't, hey, what, what, you, what are you in for, man? Yeah, in federal prison, not too, not just state <laughs> prison. You're in federal prison. Yeah, but what are you? What, what are you, you going to say? What are you going to say? I, you know, I've embezzlement, uh, <laughs> yeah. COVID cards, COVID cards, COVID cards, fake, COVID cards. fake <laughs> COVID cards, fake COVID. Yeah, cards. yeah, I stole from the government. No big deal. <laughs> forger. They just say forger. That's all they do. They just call yourself a forger. Ten dollars each is $10 what he was selling for. Each. I'm in prison Max for ten dollars each. Wow, craziness, man, craziness. Each each car, each dollar gets you a year. It's it's nuts. Think about the, uh, but but let's talk, let's go into other forms. We're talking about hacking right now. T-Mobile, big, big, major hack. That's As a matter crazy. of fact, what we're seeing right now is the very first, uh, you know, investigation since Biden said, you know what, we're going to get involved with this. And we're looking at right now, the FCC probe is the first high profile probe under the Biden investigation in which over 40 million people had information hacked That's from T-Mobile. And it wasn't just little information. It was birthdays, social security numbers, names, address, everything about you. And you didn't even have to be a T-Mobile. You didn't even have to be a T-Mobile no, customer. No, just think about it. If you if you, if you you wanted that T-Mobile phone one day, you went in there and you filled out that application. They said no. They, they said, just took your information. They took your information. Yes. And they sold it. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so the price out there, and again, I don't understand that dark web part right there, but drive safe, the value of the information they're selling out right now is going anywhere between $80,000 and six Bitcoin. One, you know, in that range, and six Bitcoin, $275,000 as wow. value as of Wednesday was the value on that. And, 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 and that's just for each person's information? I mean, it's or? real. No, well, it's in groups, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's going to be in groups. Probably the higher the credit score, the more it's worth, I guess. You yeah. Know? Who um, knows how from, that works? From what I understand uh, from just, like, doing some research on it and how information gets sold <clears> on there and seeing how that whole system works, essentially you can buy... Uh, somebody's identity it'll have like hey here's this person with this credit score they make this much money here's their social security number their credit information and like all this stuff so that you can just buy things online with it or you can use their identity wow. to apply for That's unemployment crazy. actually my parents both had their identity stolen and <laughs> somebody applied for unemployment under my dad's name and they did not find out until the school board was like, called my dad and was like, hey, did you apply for unemployment while working for us? <laughs> wow. And then hey, figured hey, the way, out later on. Is that on. Ferrari? And did you get the Ferrari <laughs> at at the dealership? I mean, <laughs> that identity theft, it's real, right? Oh, it's, it's scary. It's, it, it, it's all of the above. And it can destroy you. And it can destroy you. And this is over 40 million people. So obviously, you know, we do have the FCC involved. It, this is going to be a big investigation, but... Listen, you know, it, it is also something, producer, maybe we can get some information other than checking maybe your freecreditreport.com. Hey, pay attention if you've, if you've subscribed, if you're an old T-Mobile customer, if you're a current T-Mobile customer, you have received some emails from them. Hey, go back, check your spam, actually read this email because stuff did happen. They did get a major breach on them. Yeah, and, and, and it wouldn't hurt, uh, and I just suggest sometimes there are a couple of organizations and a couple of security uh, type software, security type organizations that you can subscribe to that will help protect you and also help protect you in the future of being ha uh, of getting your identity stolen. Yeah, and you know, for, for our drivers and, and for the listeners that watch this show, producer, let's also do this because, you know, we're out there on the road. We're too busy to sit there and check things out all the time. Okay. Let's find somebody. Let's find that, that subscription. Let's find somebody that comes in here and identifies that, that our listeners can also be part of, right? To get that alert when something happens. Let's get that out have a good conversation. Yeah, I mean, it, it is not uncommon for a truck driver to come home and the mailbox be full, mm -hmm. right? Because you don't check it every day, right? You're out on the road. So you come home after a week or two weeks and your mailbox is crammed, packed. I don't know how they get all that mail in the box the, over time. It doesn't matter. But they usually get it all in there some way, shape, form, or fashion. And then you're trying to pry it out with a crowbar, and it fills up a, ba a basket 
like this much to get your mail. Yeah, and this just out for you in case you're not aware of it. Hey, listen, just because you don't check your mailbox, it doesn't mean that bill's not due. Yeah. You're right. I mean, That's, you still got to pay knows. that bill. Everybody knows. I'm not checking. <laughs> it's been a bad week, man. I haven't ran very many miles. Oh, I am not checking that mailbox today. <laughs> it comes either way. <laughs> the, the bills do show up. Hey, do you see I-70, and this is important as well, I-70, not in the Colorado area. We're no. talking Kansas City, downtown Kansas City. It's going to be shut down tonight at what, at midnight? Yeah, and then it's going to re- it's going to extend all the way until Monday. 8 it, p.m. tonight. Start, yeah, starting at 8 p.m. 8 tonight. 8 p.m. all the way until Monday morning. Um, I will tell you that that small section of the area that it's going to be closed, you can run 670 parallel. Uh, and, and be just fine and make exits on 670. I think all of the same exits are on 670. They just run very, very parallel to one another, and you can do uh, 670 and then get back on 35 or get back on 70 either way. Yeah, let's 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 hear that one more time. I-70, downtown Kansas City, right there at I-35. and the north, be a mess. Uh, yeah, the north side of the downtown exit. It's going to be shut down tonight at 8 p.m., reopen Monday morning, they're saying at 5 a.m. And and that doesn't mean, and I know y'all know this, it doesn't mean at 5 a.m. it's just going to be wide open. There's going to be some major delays. Nothing too crazy. They're just repairing some pavement. Yeah, and, and you know, they, you got to give them some space because that is a very high traffic area right in there. And I think what they're trying to do is because of the massive bridges and the number of exits that are in a very short space on I-70 right there in the downtown area, they're just wanting you to find an alternate route and close that off completely so the quicker they get it done and they can do all lanes across and they don't have to worry about just doing one section and letting you pass by them. I think they're doing a, a multiple sections. Yeah, and and it just brings me in, in, into a little bit of another subject, drive safe construction zones, right? Absolutely. I mean, listen, they're going to block it so you don't have a choice. But when we enter in construction zones, listen, you, you are the kings. You say it all the time. The kings and the queens of the highway – you can control that highway speed when we're entering into that construction zone. You can reduce your speed. You have to reduce your speed because there's some there's people out there working. Absolutely. And we want you to control those highways. You know, the four-wheelers, they don't get it. You hold the big CDL. You are that professional. You do this for a living. Help save lives. And that includes those out there on the roads working on our highway system today. Yeah, you know, um, they give them a break, um, and that's what they, you see the signs all the time. Give them a break, but make sure that when you're there, not only that you know, and, and one of the reasons why we try to communicate this early is that you're aware of what you're also getting into. It always pays, it always pays dividends by looking on your mobile app or whatever on the highway and construction, so you're kind of aware that you're getting close to constructions as well. There should be signs out there, but they blow over. Uh, people and or you're driving by another truck and you can't see them in their block. But if you know what's coming and you know and you're expecting stuff to be happening, you can help other drivers. And I suggest that when you do enter into these heavy construction zones where you're forced to slow down a great deal, let everybody know. Hit your flashers. Let everybody know you're slowing. Do everything that you can to gather attention because you want everybody to know that this is a slowing point. Yes, we and again, we just want to stress this. Hey, great point on that. We want to do our part to make these highways safe, not just for us, but for everyone. And again, we'll say it again. We want to make it safe for those kids, your parents, your friends, your family, for those that are working on the road. Let's do our part, Drive Safe Dave. A lot of, we, we talk about safety on the road, right? That, 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 that airspace. Not so safe up there right now going on. The FAA, <laughs> let me tell you something. They have they have paid out, they have put out $532,000 of fines this year on 34 passengers. Yeah. Additional fines. <laughs> okay. So so the FAA is an is an agency. They're not actually a, an executive branch um, where they can where they can arrest people or Wait, they can I, And I I guess I didn't realize that. You know, I'm thinking, well, how come they just don't arrest them? Well, they can't. They can't. Not All the they... FAA itself. Now the police can come in and arrest them if they're for assault or whatever crime they had during while they were on the plane, but the FAA itself is not doesn't have that authority to do that. However, they can issue civil fines and you always lose. I'm just telling you, you're not going to win that civil fight with the United States government when they issue you a hard fine for doing, for being mad or getting unruly or not doing what you're told. And 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 it's some most of them stem, didn't most of them stem from basically not wearing your it's mask? The, let's face it, it's that mask, right? Sometimes we're struggling with the mask is 
Why do I got to wear What's the rules? That is right. the rules. Well, yeah. well why, it's the rules. Sometimes we got to do it, and, and just because daddy said so. You know, why? Well, because dad said so. Well, Producer. I mean, while a lot of them were about masks, there were still <laughs> about 1,000 reports of people who were physically assaulted, threatened, or yelled obscenities at the flight attendants or other passengers. And so that's... I mean, that's one third of all of these that are happening that we saw so yeah, far. Yeah, but have you ever sat in the middle seat? Have you ever sat <laughs> oh, in the I, middle seat? I've had a baby behind me crying the whole time. I, I was this close to maybe getting what into this What were you going to get trip. up you assault the baby? Just <laughs> throw it across the you know, plane. You can get in trouble for that. You can get in trouble for shaking a baby. I, I'll tell you, but, but you know, in, in drinking, you know, people, and, and a lot of people, and sometimes people drink too much. And, it's and, been, it, it, I, I've heard about that. It's been known to happen, right? Wait, really? People drink too much? And, and then they get unruly, and then they, I, and then you get duct taped to a chair. <laughs> yeah, we saw that too, right? But they did say so. There was a there was a, a conversation, a poll that went out to to the uh, the flight attendants that said 85 percent. Have have now dealt with unruly passengers, so it's it's a vast majority. Think about that. Have have dealt with that situation. Drive safe, Dave. I do. I'm a big believer that. Hey, let's face it. These masks, you boy, we see it when we travel. People just fight it, and I'm thinking it's just the rules. We got it's for it's an hour and a half flight. Yeah, they don't fight or argue about pants. <laughs> they don't argue about shoes. But they want to argue about a simple mask. Maybe you wearing. don't argue about pants or shoes, but some of us. <laughs> hey, Drive Safe, how about a little bit of freight and review? You got it. All right, and boy, howdy, are we seeing a lot of freight. We talk about it all the time, but we're seeing some major jumps. As we move to 15,800 shipments across the country today, look at this right here. Everything under this white line across it is, is freight that shipped out less. We are at the almost the apex of the freight, and we're not even yet in that prime time shipping area. We look at the vans, okay, the dry vans. If you're pulling them dry van sectors, Boy, howdy, look at that again, 11,239 shipments. It's on a pretty significant increase. And what's amazing is we've been talking about those rejected lanes, right? The freight that gets rejected. Hey, it's been minimized. Has it? Because all of a sudden now it's jumped back up and we haven't got caught up with me here yet. Let's see if we can get it. One more time. Here we go. All right, we look at that outbound tender rejections. We have cruised just like that back to 23%. So we're going back to the middle of July when we started dipping down, right? We're back up to 23% of more freight that was shipping out during that period. Phenomenal amount of um, excitement around that freight going on here. We do wanna look at one more thing, it's that haul index. We love to look at the haul because it tells you the difference between the amount of trucks and the amount of freight moving out. We'll look at Dallas once again. Dallas, Texas right now, 136 more tr more loads than there are trucks, 136. We look down here in San Antonio at 6.38. It's moved up a little bit. They usually are hanging down about, about 15, 18 under that. We look at all these right here at 90 right here is Houston. 90 less trucks than they have loads. These trucks right here are coming up to Dallas getting that freight. We're not having problems moving freight out of Dallas because the rest of Texas, Hey, let's face it, not a lot of freight coming out of those cities. This is Drive Safe Dave here, going to do another safety show about Get Out and Look. Ben Turner's hooking up and he's going to reposition the trailer into a new spot. He's going to demonstrate in the rain what it means to get out and look. Here we are outside getting wet, but you know what? It does not deter Ben of doing the right thing by getting out of the trailer and walking back and making sure it is safe back there before he backs up into the spot. He checks all the way around the trailer and then comes back and gets in the truck. Notice the lights are flashing. He blows the horn and starts the process of getting back into the spot. 
There he is concluding it. Flash, you're still going, making sure that he's visible and everybody knows what's going on. But you know what? Another reason this is successful is because he chose to get out and look the BCB way. Thanks, everybody, and have a great and safe day. Hey, Drive Safe Day. We watch these videos here and that's this commercial here, watching the proper way to get out and look, the proper way to back up. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, how many times does this really happen with every driver every day? Would you say, and, and again, I mean, every time we back up, do we really get out and look? I mean, how often are you doing that? Drive safe, you being over the ex-over-the-road driver in the course of a day, you may not back up that many times, but did you, honest to God, really get out every time? You know, I, 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 I truly, I, don't, I didn't do it every single time. Um, there were many, many times that I did. Um, and so, so stop there. So what makes you just not get out and look? The confidence know, that... Yeah, you know, like if you're you're in a wide open parking lot and there, you drive right past it, and there's 19 spaces open, and you're just backing into one of them. I, I think I think I've done that many many times, and 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 just backed up into an open space when there was nothing around, and just putting my truck back in the back in the hole, and and, and making sure that it's there and available because I would park away from everybody to get some rest or what have you. But but I'll tell you, um, I've come to learn a little bit more. I mean, I've come to see a little bit more and think a little bit more about safety over the years. And as we continue to do this and come to believe in it with a much more, uh, with a much more fervent passion about safety. And, it, and if it means doing it every single time, then it means doing it every single yeah, time. Yeah, but, but let's face it. I mean, you're sitting down with me right now. I am. If you're out there on the road, I mean, what, what, what makes you do that? I mean, I, would you, do you think you would do it today I believe every I, single time? I believe I would. And that's what I'm, you know, that, and that's the part that we got to get at is, hey, what makes you just do it every time because that one time you don't do it, the, it, it it's wide open, right? Drive safe. Right. There's 19 spaces wide open. I don't need to do that. But that one time that you that that you don't do that because there were 19 spots, you don't get out and look and, and you hit something. Was it worth it? I mean, no. And, and I've, I've come to learn over time by by not only listening to my my my, my brothers and sisters out there on the road and and listening to what they're doing and how they're doing it and how well they're doing it and the improvement that they've made, they it, it demonstrates their commitment to what's going on. And I and I know that we've had hiccups and I know that it's happened, but we do back up a lot of times in trucking. They, every time you bump a dock, you 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 must. And every time you you uh, you get into a space, and almost every single time you park, you're basically backing up and you're and you're doing those things. So there are a lot more times you back up than you realize when you're in a truck. Yes. But I guess that's the point, though. So if you're backing up that many times, if you don't get out every time, well, that's just another opportunity, really, for you to back into something. Absolutely. And not only that, you really, I think what I've come to learn here uh, with BCB Live, most, most uh, uh, better than anything, is that we're developing great habits. I mean, by mm -hmm. being safe, habits are developed by doing it over and over and over in great repetition. You don't get really good at something by accident. You get really good at something by doing it over and over and by practicing. You, you know, what, what is it? That, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. And how do you get to be the safest station in the nation? Practice, practice, practice. You practice that safety measure so that you do it every time. <clears throat> hey, but what about that time, Drive Safe Dave? And, and let's face it, we just had a backing accident with, uh, with one of the listeners today that, or la a couple days ago, where they were parked at a spot. Let's, so they're parked they feel like that car, that truck's going to hit them. They got they have to give that truck some more space, and they just back up. I mean, so you're, you're at a stoplight, you're at a stop sign. There's traffic behind you. I mean, do you really at that point just get out and look, or do you assume the people behind you are going to back up? Do you just not back up? Do you take a chance on getting hit with the vehicle? What do you do? You know, I, real I, life situation. In, in, in a real life situation. What you have to do is you have to set the parking brake, you have to set the flashers on, and you have to hold up. That intersection is controlled by the person in the intersection. Nobody's going anywhere until that truck's out of the way from turning left. Nobody's going to do anything. And boy, we may have to delay the moment. We may have to set the moment. But before you put that truck in reverse, you've got to make sure you get back there and you take a look. You hold up traffic and you make sure it's safe for everybody. You may have to turn away. You may have to do it. But you know what? What really happens in these instances? is that we don't take the time to do the right thing in the very, very beginning. And we don't slow down with what's happening. Sure, it develops quickly, and these moments seem to happen right away. This truck's turning in, and he's 
he, he's trying to cut left hand in front of you and you feel like you, he's cutting too close, man, we need to stop the moment. We need to freeze the moment. You need to hold the other driver up, hand signal, get some eye contact, and say, hold up a minute. Let's, let's figure this out together. Nobody else in the intersection is going anywhere. They may honk, but they're not going anywhere. They're not moving you. And, and, and that's what I wanted to hear right there because what we don't want to do is create an accident by avoiding an accident. Correct. Right? We, we, the, the fact that somebody may turn into us, it doesn't, that doesn't mean we want to back into somebody, back into a kid, back into a child, somebody crossing the street, another van, another truck. It's not worth us backing into. And that's where I, I like what you said there, because when that moment comes and, and you're rushed, you've got to tell yourself to slow down. Absolutely. When you're rushed, you know, it, it, the heat's on, right? I mean, Absolutely. your heart's panicking. What am I going to do? People are honking. You've got to slow down. You yeah. have to slow it down. Absolutely. And, and it doesn't matter that people honk. And it doesn't matter <laughs> if, they, if they understand or if they appreciate the safety in what you're doing and making sure that everybody's okay. By that small moment, it won't take that long, right? It won't take that long by getting out and just saying, hey, man, and then walking back and clearing the moment. And if there's somebody back there, there could be a motorcycle back there behind you and you can't see it. And, and those things are that dangerous. They can develop that quickly and you'll never see what's directly <laughs> behind the vehicle unless you get out, walk back there and mm -hmm. take a look. Yeah, and that's what we want. Everything we do, everything we talk about here at BCB Life, listen, it requires action. You've got to do something. It requires you recognizing that you're in a you're in a rush situation. You've got to recognize that you're at a stop sign, a stoplight. Somebody's turning into you, perhaps, and you want to get them room. And you got to stop for a second and say, "Hold on, I'm going to get out and I'm going to look." Yeah, and it's, hold on. Yeah, and I'm going to do it. Absolutely, and it's more than just that. You know, if you do get out in a situation like that, you walk back there, and there is a car not close enough room to back up. Man, wouldn't it be great to say, "Hey, look." I have to back up and tell the other car, hey, I've got to back up a little bit so I can let the truck in. He's blocking the intersection. And that kind of communication is valuable, you know? And you've seen what's going on. You know what's back there. And you've talked to them. And everything, everything's way better. And you feel more confident. And everything should turn out much better in the end. Yeah, and hopefully that truck behind you, that car behind you, is not an autonomous one because drive safe day. We've been talking about that. How do you tell that car, that truck behind you, if there's nobody in it? Hey, I need some more room up here. Can you back up? Do you got to take your keyboard with you? I think you know so. what are you gonna do? I have no. That's a great point. I have no idea. And you know, those are real world problems that I haven't solved yet. But I don't believe we find ourselves in those kinds of situations. However, what we do need to do is we need to get out and we need to take a look and slow down. Yeah, slow down. So, yeah, slow the moment down, you know, do your part right there, slow it down. You know what? Because we know you can do it and we want you, we want you to remember. And, and so much of what we talk about drive safe is muscle memory. We, we want you to hear from us that you have to slow it down. When you're, when you, when you're rushed to make that decision, you got to <laughs> slow down. No matter what, you have to slow down. I want hurry. you to think about that. I want you to remember when you're, when you're just caught up, when you're mad. Drive safe oh, day. When yeah. you're angry, when when you got that crappy dispatch, when you when you when it's raining, when you know you're not gonna Drive get home. Drive safe Dave's not answering the phone. Yes. <laughs> those are the moments you must slow down. Hey, drive safe, it's time to give away some money. Absolutely, I'm ready. Phrase it pays time. And and listen, you gotta read it word for word, but there's a lot of cash. It's a hundred dollar week, is that right? It is. Producer, who do you got for us? All me? right, we got Albert Tubbs. Albert Tubbs, do you know that phrase that pays, Albert sir? Tubbs. Albert, Albert, do you know that phrase that pays? Should be able to unmute your mic and hop on, Mr. Albert. Albert, if you can, make yourself, you know, we, we got you freed up. Hit that microphone and give us that phrase that pays. If not, well, I'm ready to move on to the next one. I am too. Let's do it. All right, Norman Sellers, do you know that up, phrase Norman? Norman, that Norman. pays, sir? Norman, Norman. Norman Sellers, Norman Sellers, should be able to... Uh, I see your hand raised. You should be able to click on your microphone, or it should have prompted you to unmute your mic there. If you're in a safe position, as in not in the truck, uh, then you can also type it out in the chat there, Norman. All right. I found we got. Sounds like we got a strike two to me. Yeah, we're on number three. All right, Come number on. three. All right, we are moving. Vicente, do you know that phrase that pays, oh, I sir? I've not heard from Vicente in a little while. What's up, Vicente? All right, Vicenta typed it out, and let's see what we got here. 
Situational awareness is always key to keep the roads safe for you and me. And you know what, Vicente? That's that's the phrase that pays right there. <laughs> Type Nothing it like out. You got the right. You got the right, you got the right thing. <laughs> I like it, Vicente. Great job, Vicente. And and again, we want to make sure that each one of you know is that we're not doing the the phrase that pays. You're not typing it out while you're driving. We don't even want you watching the videos while you're driving. Listen to us on BCB Live Radio. Right. Listen to us on YouTube. Follow us on LinkedIn. BCB Live, the safest station in the nation. Drive safe. Absolutely. Hi, uh, welcome. I have Heather here from our dispatch team. She's a DM. Many of you may have her as a DM. Lucky you. We're going to do a rapid fire. Um, are you ready? I am. Okay. Dawn or dusk? Ooh, dusk. Favorite season? Spring. What's for dinner tonight? Ooh, um, probably something out of the freezer. <laughs> How many pull-ups can you do in a row? Zero. <laughs> Are reindeers real creatures? Yes. Are you politically correct? No. <laughs> uh, do you know how to salsa dance? No. <laughs> and your favorite type of muffin? Ooh, blueberry. Thank you for joining us. Hey, good, good morning, morning, everybody. Um, welcome back. It's the uh, end of another great week. Uh, again, we are at one day of Get Out and Look, but hey, we got to start over. All and journeys that, start with the first step. That's right. And uh, we are at 94 days of uh, no preventable accidents, so to speak, you know, uh, DOT reportables. And, and the main ones out there moving, viol you know, the moving violations where we hit somebody driving down the highway. Um, so, again, we got to keep it up. Great job, everybody. Uh, this week, as we close out, and again, remember, starting, I guarantee you today, they're going to be looking. But this weekend, technically, officially Sunday, starts Brake Safety Week. We have been talking for two weeks about the brakes. Uh, so, again, got to uh, just don't risk it. Make sure you're looking, you're listening for air leaks. If you've got any questions, get send the Macro 39. Let's get it by a truck shop and have them looked, you know, have them look, check to see if they're out of adjustment. Um, a lot of the truck stops loves in them. Sometimes during these weeks, we'll do um, free checks for you. Just kind of check your uh, measurements and stuff. But, you know, the things that you can do, we had the, the special guest yesterday, you know, look at them brake pads, look at the wheels, look for the rotors being shiny. They should be shiny if your truck or the trailer hasn't sat for a while, right? Because the uh, that just shows that the pads are working and they're uh, they're gripping uh, the the drum or the rotor uh, again. Forgive me for my technology uh, deficiency there, but I know what they're talking about. And they on both sides should be uh, shiny. If there's rust there, then it tells you one side isn't, and you need to have them checked. Um, and then again, just to kind of close out, we did Monday Tuesday breaks with our violations of, against all of our ma vehicle maintenance violations. And then the breaks on Tuesday against the numbers against our out of service violations. Then Wednesday, we did tires against all of our vehicle maintenance violations. And then yesterday, we did out of service. So, just to kind of wrap it all up in the totals, to just put them all in perspective so you all know how, I don't want to say easy, but the problem isn't something that can take our focus away from to a myriad of things. It's two. We have to hone in on two things. And, and it's brakes and tires. And as you can see, all 76% of all of our service violations are brake and tire related, right? And that just comes from uh, the uh, 57 and 19, right? 76, I'm sorry, then we're out of service, my bad. The 19 and the 12, or 16 and 12, 28 of 37 out of service violations were brake and tire related. And then 51%, adding the 57 and 19, right, gives us 76 of 149. So we're just right over that 50% uh, mark, but um, our brake related. So when we focus on these, you know, our brake and tires. So 51% of all of our violations. And, and, and I just want to kind of, again, put it in perspective. The points uh, that these accumulate on your score, on our scores and your scores uh, that has trouble getting down it puts us in a 66 percentile right now amongst other carriers in our grouping right that's going to represent about close to 90 to 95 percent of those points um because they are the most 
Brakes and tires are the highest point accumulators, if you will. So when you got 50% of all your violations, the highest accumulators, then that just, you know, that's that's probably 100% of the highest accumulators. So you're going to add, you know, average them out and you're going to be somewhere about that 80 to 90 percentile um, of of our actual points that we got garner that ranks us in our carrier in amongst other carriers. So this is really critical that we can do. And so um, you know, look for reminders, look for some proactive measures, uh, things that we can do. And again, as always, we want to hear from the professionals. Each and every one of you out there may have some great ideas of what we can do to help our fleets and our drivers, either through a certain kind of education that you've heard about or that you've maybe gone through, um, you know, even in uh, as, as, as simple and basic as pre-trips, um, you know, what, what, what did some other uh, companies that you've been at that were really good at this stuff, uh, what did they do? Let's get the best practices out there. You know, um, it really comes down to, as we highlighted, pre-trip, pre-trip, pre-trip. And remember, pre-trip isn't walking around the truck looking. Pre-trip is walking around the truck and trailer inspecting, looking for something wrong. Uh, and if you're looking for something wrong, let's face it, you might find it. You know, equipment breaks down, equipment wears out. And I think that's a lot of it. I think a lot of people don't inspect, true inspect, because they're afraid they're going to find something and then they've got to take time out of their day, right? Yep. But when you stop and think, what happens if they place you out of service? Yep. You're out of service usually on certain things for 10 hours, right? At the very least, you're out for two to three while they get service gets called out. Then you got the expense, right? And you've lost that time anyway, when all you had to do was do a good pre-trip, go get it fixed, and maybe it gets in there in an hour, hour and a half, you're out, you know? So either way, you benefit by doing a good pre-trip. So again, I know there's exceptions that you may wait at a garage, but hey, we can get help, you know? We're gonna be there to support each and every one of you. So hey, we're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be right back with some weather. Hey, welcome back, everybody. We're just going to start with the hot stories, and you can see the hurricanes. <laughs> they, they, they got a big portion of the map here. And you can see Grace down here really spinning quickly. Uh, you can see that circle. Not so much up here with Henri. And again, he wasn't supposed to be very strong anyway. But this is the one that they are expecting shortly to go back into hurricane status. When it came across land, it weakened slightly as it usually does. But as you can see here, and we'll zoom in, man, there's some white there. It's going to be some really high winds, 96. So it is approaching. Actually, it's probably in Hurricane 2 status. Um, I wonder what the, that's the forecast. I'm just curious what the gusts are. You know, it's got 36 on that outer band currently. So, uh, again, what we're looking at, and this is supposed to, Head right here between, don't even ask me to pronounce, Poza Rica del Hidalgo. Close enough? All right. Producer's giving me a no thumbs up. And Tampico, Mexico, right? Uh, so it's going to hit right in here later uh, this e afternoon, uh, early evening, and probably more likely in the early hours of Saturday um, morning. So, again, it is not expected to affect uh, the U.S., you know, uh, Laredo, maybe Brownsville in that area might see some wind and rain uh, on the outer bands, but the eye and, and the big damage is going to come right through between Tampico and Hildago, uh, Mexico. So, uh, and then this one, Henri is just, he's already started up northward a little bit, and that's exactly what he's doing. They do have some hurricane watches uh, for the coast because in case something would change and this thing shifts. But again, he's looking at some 72 monarch guys, so very close to hurricane status himself. Uh, but again, not going to see a whole lot. Uh, we're not expected anyway to see a whole lot for uh, the U.S. Our current radar shows it pretty kind of quiet. Got D.C. area, New Jersey, uh, Delaware, uh, the eastern part of Maryland, and, and um, the very southeastern part of uh, uh, Pennsylvania. You're seeing some storms there, maybe some heavy rain. And then again, up in the Dakotas, Montana, 
parts of Nebraska can see some rain. And then there's some scattered showers throughout the uh, so southern area. Our forecast, there you go. You see uh, the D.C. area, uh, South Dakota, Nebraska expected to see some strong storms develop. As the afternoon goes, uh, it gets worse. So you can see, uh, again, it moves out of Nebraska, but North Dakota gets into the act, and it starts to get into western Iowa. And again, as it's been all week, the south corridor here uh, from uh, Mississippi all the way up around to Virginia is expected to see some showers and even down in Florida as well. Our winds, 4 o'clock this afternoon, so we're expecting some 40 to 45 mile an hour gusts right there in the Wyoming, Nebraska, Dakotas. The rest of the country, not so bad in the upper 20s uh, in, in the DFW. Currently, we don't have much going on except for Wyoming. Again, the same areas that's going to get worse uh, as the day goes. But the eastern half is looks really nice uh, as far as the wind goes. So it's going to be pretty much west of the Mississippi. Tomorrow morning, not much going on except the north. And then tomorrow afternoon on our weekend, you can see the winds. Not good news for the firefighters because right out in here is where the um, Dixie Fire is. Uh, again, last check, 31% still and over 650,000 acres. So it's, if they don't get a control on it pretty soon, this one's going to get really close to a million acres. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. But if you're traveling, if you get a load going to the Northern California, you want to check with us. Let's get an idea and look at it. See if we got a safe um, route for you all. But you can see the wind basically in the Northwest for the, or the Western part of the country for the weekend. Um, and as you can see, uh, even tomorrow at 4 p.m., you can see Henri is much more north, you know, and, and still out there. Um, and then you can see uh, Grace is already inland, so by tomorrow afternoon. So in the next 24 hours, uh, Grace should hit make landfall, and but we shouldn't see much of uh, anything as far as we're concerned. So we'll take a quick break and be back with some videos. All right, to perform a macro 39, you'll go to your meal screen. Hit send, go to form, and then you will scroll over until you find the 39 code, fill out the particular information that's on the form, trailer number, tractor number, write the description of what's wrong, and then hit send. All right, welcome back. I am Buckle Up Bob and Disoriented Dale. There we go. Uh, that's here that, we go. That's it. It's Friday. I'm disoriented. I love it. The producer coined a phrase and it, it might stick. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is the producer. He can make he, it stick. That's true. <laughs> what do you got for us this morning, Dale? You know, uh, got some great videos. Only have four of them. And if you'll notice, the last four days or a couple days, we have not seen any tailgating videos. Drivers, we're doing a great job out here. This one just starts out, and I want to call out. This is one of our newer drivers. I think he's only been with us a couple weeks. You know, this video starts out with keeping the distance, great following distance, speed and space management. You know, traffic starts slowing down. He starts slowing down as we come even slower. He keeps the distance. What a great job here! Who by is it? Let's driver. give him a shout out. It's Stephen Lopez. Hey, Stephen. Great job, and, and again, we want to just really, I know Thankful Thursday was yesterday, but man, thank you for just jumping in and being part of our culture, helping uh, our drivers, uh, you know, showing the support that they're already established in this fleet, and you just jumping right in and being a part of that culture. We appreciate you, and welcome to the family. All right, now here we got a, we got a stoplight coming up, and again, I, I love it. This is just another great video. If we, if we watch, you know, traffic is pulling away from us in most of the lanes. That means we're going slower than, you know, the traffic around us. Can't rear end somebody if some, they're pulling away from us. Don't get in a hurry. We're paying attention to what the light is. You know, we slow down for the vehicle ahead of us. Light stays green. We go through it. Uh, easy peasy, I think is how they say Hang it. So on just this one. Nice, nice video again. All right, yeah. And what I love about that, play that again, yeah. Here's a car that's going to pass us, right? And they're getting in a hurry. They don't want to get caught. We don't. Yeah. We stay back. And you know what, folks? I, I counted the time, three to three, between three and four seconds, we went through the intersection behind that car. So when you think you're losing all this time, you're not, and, and you end up getting there anyway. And you've all seen it on the road. You've seen somebody driving crazy, tailgating you, flying by you, only to get four or five miles down the road and you're two cars behind them, you know, because of something else. So yep. 
Hey, it, this just takes patience. Great job again. Yep. And here's another one, you know, uh, speed and space management. What I really noticed about this one, it's not only our truck. Look at the truck in the lane uh, next to us, the space that he has between the vehicle ahead of him. So hopefully, you know, they're either listening or it's wearing off and we're getting better as an industry because, again, speed and space by our driver, great job. But the trucks on both sides of us are, you know, have great space management too. So good job, driver. Yes. More than just in front. Good job. You know, and I, this one I just put, you know, uh, train tracks done right because he doesn't have to stop a lot, but he stops here, you know, does the double look, you know, we came in through a green light coming up to that stop sign to, to stop after the track. So just great situational awareness, making sure that the tracks are clear on this. This is out in Illinois, and that's probably a commuter trading track out there, and those things go whistling through. So great job by our driver, you know, paying attention, situational awareness, stop it for the tracks, and then going through. It's just yeah. wonderful. Good videos. Outstanding videos, everybody. Great job. Who we got, producer? Yeah, we got Norman Sellers on the line. What do you got, Oh, producer? Norman. Norman, I know you was called on the <laughs> phrase that pays. Yeah, you saying. probably got to say, hey, I could do it. <laughs> All right, who else we got, producer? Anybody else? Everybody tongue-tied this Friday. Come on, we got through everything. There's not much going on, yeah. folks. Hey, quick announcement. Again, apologize for any confusion, but the, the uh, bonus goes out next Friday. Um, and so, again, apologize if, if there was a, a miscommunication on the date. Uh, I, I will own that. Uh, also, I'm without a computer this morning for at least another two hours. Uh, they're coming to look at it and see what we can do. So, again, my cell phone will be available. But if you need logs or anything, you're probably going to have to go to Dale. I will send a fleet message uh, once I'm up and running so that everybody knows that it don't just keep dumping it on, on Dale. Dump on <laughs> Dale okay. today. Yeah, yeah, it's right. dump on Dale. Yeah. Hey, dump dump on disoriented Dale. Yeah, dump on disoriented Dale. Who we got, producer? Yeah, Donald Scott. What do you got for us, sir? Hey, Donald. Good morning. Uh, Mom, can I get you to call me whenever this is over? I sure can. Thanks. Uh, hey, Thanks, Don. Sir. Yes, sir. Can you text me with your phone number? Because I don't have a computer. Um, I'm driving right now. Okay. I'll, 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 we'll, we'll I'll get, get it. We'll get it. I'll get it, buddy. We'll get it. Okay. Thanks. Hey, Thanks, sir. Anybody? All right. Anybody else? You know, I looked at uh, uh, Colorado this morning. I-76 eastbound is still closed um, because of fear of rain and mud slides. And so 76 or 70? 70. I'm sorry. Yeah, I-70 okay. I eastbound, uh, Glenwood Springs. They've got it closed again because of the fear of rain and mud slides. It looked like westbound is still open, 12-foot restriction, but we don't pull wide loads through there. Yeah. And another thing to start thinking about, September's right around the corner, chain laws go yes. in effect. Yeah, great reminder, Dale. Uh, let's get that out on a fleet message when yeah. you get back to your desk. Uh, just remind them, hey, 70, let's just stay off of it. I, east, west, it, if one lane's closed and they're worried about rain, then the other one's not going to be far behind it at Maybe not in that section, but somewhere on that yeah. highway. Uh, so, again, because we've had the westbound closed before. So we really want to avoid west out of Denver uh, for the next few days, at least this week, until we can see what's going on. Yeah, and we'll keep you updated on the chain laws as well. Uh, I'll go ahead and see if I can get some information about when those days are going to start September ahead of time. 1st, September, September 1st. 1st, so we don't even need to worry about it. We've already got our safety <laughs> yeah. directors Every year on. it's the yep. same, producer, just so you know. Well, that September 1st to May 31st, they are required to carry them, not, not use them. Just not carry use them. them. We never, ever use them. And, and that... Carrying is west of Denver on the I-70 through the Yeah, there's a mile Boca. marker where it starts. Yeah, the rest of Colorado is fine. It's just you got to start carrying them out the west. Yeah, unless west we get up there. in some of the mountain passes that we should never be on <laughs> anyway. So <laughs> Correct. Did anybody else get on there? Because I know we got a lot to go. All right. Hey, I'm going to try to close everybody out with a little bit of a prayer here this morning. Uh, forgive me. I, I don't know. I'm just head's kind of foggy. And I'm, and I'm the disoriented one. Yeah, and you're the disoriented <laughs> one. Um Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we come to you again with just heavy hearts for all the people in the world that are suffering, Lord. Many of our own families, uh, many of our BCB family, Lord. Again, we, uh, we pray that you continue to give the strength and courage to Larry Graham and his family um, to just keep him fighting a good fight, but to also always remember that he can't do it alone, that he needs his Heavenly Father, Lord. And we ask that you remind him of that and that you show him that you're there. Uh, let him feel the warmth and the love of, of, your, of your goodness and your grace, Heavenly Father. Lord, we pray for 
the government leaders that they they react and they protect life, Lord. Uh, the people of Afghanistan, um, just whatever it takes that your will be done, Lord. But we just ask for forgiveness and mercy on that um, and that you extend your grace to those people in Afghanistan and even our own country as we battle another variant potential of uh, COVID, Lord, that is uh, supposedly starting to creep up and is here in Texas, uh, I hear. So, Lord, we pray for all the uh, first responders, the nurses, the healthcare professionals, uh, doctors, that they can take care and adequately, uh, we have the room for those. And, and, and that the people use good discernment, you know. Um, Lord, we need that. We need that wisdom and that uh, just heavenly guidance from you. And, of course, Lord, we just really need your protection for our drivers. Again, they've had another safe week where they get to return home to their families. And everybody that they came around uh, on the highways, Lord, also got to return to their families. Uh, and we just thank you for that continued and appre much appreciated wisdom. Lord, help them make the right decisions. Help them to continue to support and love one another. And of course, Lord, we ask all of this in your precious son's name. Amen. Yeah. Hey, everybody, we will talk with you again this afternoon. And stick around a little bit later as we do have freight waves coming up next here on BCB Live. <laughs>